Hey folks, it's Wing Day! Oh, finally, they're getting delivered today. I just got off the phone with the truck driver. He's on his way over here now. I've got the camera set up so we'll be able to see the whole delivery process. And um, awesome, it's finally here. It is cold out. It is a grand of like 32 degrees, grand total of like 32 degrees out, so a little chilly. But hey, I'll take it. So uh, I'll leave the cameras running so you can actually see the unloading, how they're delivered, and put them in here, and then uh, go from there. And here you have the truck arriving. Uh, I do have to apologize. There is a point at which you'll definitely see that the primary camera has a bit of a blurry haze to it. I think there was a thumbprint or a smudge on it, and I, I just noticed it while doing this, basically, while fixing these uh, these videos. So I have since fixed that, and it won't be a problem in future productions, but let's deal with it there. Um, here you see the guys unloading it off the truck. Uh, thankfully, this particular truck had a Tommy lift on the back of it. The first one didn't, like the, the, the empennage kit. He didn't have a Tommy truck, so we had to manhandle it off there. So they, I think they learned their lesson. Uh, that particular crate, I talk about it later, but it's a, a little over 12 feet long, and it's kind of it's kind of amusing watching him and you know Jimmy it back and forth, back and forth, and back and forth to get it off that truck because that truck I think is only like six or seven feet wide. It's not, it ain't that wide. Uh, and here is the other piece now. So one thing that might be a bit of a shock to you if you're doing this for the first time is that there is a freight charge. Um, I think a lot of us are used to purchasing things from Amazon and you know having it primed to us and overnighted it via UPS and paying all the freight and shipping up front. That's not how this works. You actually have to pay him with a check after he drops it off. It's not COD uh, because you're not paying for the piece itself. You're just paying for the freight. And so that's what I was just doing there. And then since... Uh, he was the same guy that delivered the original piece. We went over and talked about the plane for a while. That's why the sudden daylight change. And uh, I talked to that a little bit more here. Well, there you go. You saw it. The wings are delivered. I'm going to close this thing because it is freezing out here. The wind is blowing. There's a good uh, 10 to 15 knot crosswind coming right in my hangar. It's 38 degrees or so, and I'm cold. So I'm going to close this, turn on the heater, and uh, then we'll worry about inventorying next. If you do get one of these hangers, get one of these uh, hurricane heaters. They're kerosene or diesel fuel heaters, and they work really well. Stink up the Dickens, but they heat well. Okay, the wings are here. They're in these boxes. So on the right, we got a box that's about 12 and a half feet long, about a foot square, not quite. And on the left, we've got a box that is about eight and a half feet long, again, about a, a foot tall and a couple, two and a half, three feet wide. The interesting thing is the guy that delivered this stuff was from Old Dominion. That's the shipping company that Vans uses. And it was the same guy that delivered my empennage. And he was really stunned that this fit in boxes the size of this. When I explained to him that uh, these boxes actually contained the wings, I could tell he really couldn't see it. He kind of got the impression that these must be really small wings. Um, I said, no, these are actually really big wings, and you know, a lot of pieces and parts come to, to make these wings as big as they are. Um, I don't know that he got it. But anyways, so... Cool. Uh, I did go back around, kind of look at the boxes. There's a little bit of bumping and marking on the exterior of the boxes, which is to be expected. It's what happened last time. And the skids have definitely been ripped off, which is just extra 2 by 4s No big deal. Again, the boxes themselves seem hale and whole, which is good. Uh, really, it's all about the interior and you know making sure that all the pieces inside are sound, which... I will do next and I will do the whole inventory process with you so you can kind of see what to expect. One thing I also did was I knew I was going to need more table space to build uh, these wings on and so I built the table. Now this table is a rolling table. I put, uh, it's got five legs. Each leg has a wheel on it. They're the screw wheels so you can actually, you know, make sure that it is flat and level across the board, which I have done. I'm also going to add a little bit of an extension on the ends. I haven't done that work yet so that the tables themselves will be as long as the wings. The ultimate goal of which is also to make it so that this table will have a jig out on the side of it that I can rest the wings on 
in, in, in the wing form, you know, so that the, the wing spar actually has a place to, to rest and I can actually do the work on the wing as it just hangs there. So that's all coming. And again, I'll share that with you here in a bit. Then it's just a matter of doing the unboxing. And so uh, that's a lot of using a couple hammers and whacking off the top lid there and, and getting in and seeing all the paper and packing on the inside. Vance does a great job, by the way, you'll see. There's a lot here, and I've sped it up quite a bit, but uh, yeah, there's a lot. It's like Christmas. And looks damaged. Looks pretty well wrapped. I'm gonna place it over here on the table. All right, at this point we go into fast mode. I speed up the video because this took a long time. Uh, it took me about, I don't know, an hour and a half to two hours, uh, I guess, to unload everything and, and go through and make sure everything looks great. Uh, look at the size of that fairing. It's huge. It really gives you some idea how big uh, how big these wings are going to be. Those things are massive. But uh, I would say be careful. Um, one of the things you'll notice is as I'm unwrapping things that a lot of them, a lot of the packages are in sub packets. And so they're like wrapped in plastic in, inside the paper. Uh, but the skins themselves are, some of them are wrapped together, but a lot of them are actually taped together. Uh, and it's very easy to bend them if you like try to pick them up uh, and didn't notice that there was, you know, one piece was taped to another piece. So just take your time and uh, don't get in a rush here. It's real easy to get excited and want to get in a rush and, and, you know, tear off and, you know, go too fast and you end up breaking or bending something and that's just not good. Okay. Well, so this is effectively what's in box number one. Um, a bunch of stuff <laughs> and giant giant fairings down there those are huge gives you kind of a real impression of how big this sucker is going to be for the time being i've gone ahead and i've left some of the uh, like four pieces of this aluminum skin in this box until i find a place to put it I'm going to have to come up with a, a system of storage. For now, I'm just inventorying. I will store later. Here's all the trash. That's a lot. So, fairly well packed, all things considered. All right, now into box two. You definitely want to use gloves, and when you're popping these bands, look away from them, because uh, I have had a band pop up and smack me in the face before. Uh, not with any of Vans products, but just at a previous place where I worked. Uh, and then the weird thing on this particular box is part was screwed in and part was nailed. And I, I was confused as to why they did it differently. But screwing was much easier. They, they should go that way always. All right. And this is what the second box looks with everything still enclosed. They did half of it with nails and the rest of it with screws. I'm not really sure why they did that. They should do all of it with screws because that was way easier. But yawn packing list. So... That's the important document right there. All right. More unwrapping. The documentation stresses this, and I'm going to stress it too. Uh, when you're unpacking these boxes, pull out all the paper and run your hands through all of it. Wear gloves. Again, you don't want a paper cut. But, you know, it's very easy for bits and pieces, large and small, to uh, be obscured in that paper. So be sure that you actually pick up and touch every single piece to make sure that you haven't accidentally thrown away something. Because, well, that would be expensive. It's also good to have a large surface to put all this stuff on when you're unboxing. And just know that that's not where you're going to store it. You're going to actually need that work area to be someplace when you're going through and inventorying it to be able to know exactly what you have and then find a place to put it. I'm suffering that right now. I don't have a lot of places to put all this stuff. And so some of it's just going to end up living on the floor. Uh, later on, uh, when I'm doing the cleanup, I move all of the large skins to a place behind the plane at the back of the hangar. Uh, and, oh, there's the big spars, and those things are big and heavy. So get your uh, lifting belt on. Well, there you go, the unloading of the wings from the boxes, all the pieces and parts. 
Uh, preliminary inspection shows that everything looks unblemished, undent, unbroken. So that's great. Vans, your packing job was, once again, excellent. You can see all the debris and detritus left over from the unpacking. Of course, the, uh, the big box there still has three, uh, four skins in it. I haven't pulled those out yet because I need to find a good place to store them. They're the big important ones. I don't want to get them scratched, so for now I'm leaving them in there. But, but there it is. That's all the stuff that you get sent. So next I'm going to go clean up and then go through this packing list and make sure everything they sent me is actually here. Again, it was cold, so you see me refilling the heater with kerosene there. But then I go through and uh, put all the trash back into the boxes. Uh, I had said I, uh, I was going to try to save some of the papers, and I decided that, you know what, eh, I'm not going to save all that paper. It's actually pretty trash, so I'm going to get rid of it. Here I'm moving the, uh, the skins to the back of the hanger. And then I'm reassembling the boxes and putting them back together. Uh, and then once that's done, I pull out the packing list and give it all a thorough read, which, you know, they recommend you do, read every single page. Uh, and once that's done, it's about getting out the various bits and starting the process of inventory. The first thing I'm going to inventory is the hardware kit, which is just a big bag full of little bags, which in turn are full of stuff. And uh, this is, you know, it's good to go through and put them in order on the table. Uh, they are numbered, so put them in baggy order and then go through and actually do the raw inventory of what's in the little inner baggies. Okay, so I'm beginning the inventory process. This is something you're going to have to go through no matter which part or which kit or which plane you get. Uh, even if you go with another manufacturer, you're going to have to do a good inventory. Thankfully, Vans does a really good job. They go through and they give you a, a thorough checklist. I mean, this is like, like 20 pages of checklist here. And it goes line by line saying that, you know, there should be one bag of, you know, 152, which is, which are rivets, uh, size AN 426 AD 3-3 right? Gives you all the information you need. And if you don't know what an AN 426 3-3, uh, AD 3-3 is, you will. Um, just bear that in mind. Uh, the other nice thing is if, is they do kind of organize and group them in a convenient way. Uh, meaning for example, I don't know what's in this bag, right? This is uh, bag number 1153. What's in it? I don't know. I could go look. Well, because I know that 1152 has a bunch of rivets, and 1154 has a bunch of rivets. Real good chance this has a bunch of rivets. In fact, three, uh, 50, uh, 1152 has 3-3. 3 1154 doesn't say what it has. Uh, 1154 has 3-4. That means this is probably 3-3.5. And it is. So there's method to their madness, which is pretty handy. Uh, the next thing is... is you do want to open each bag and count everything, but you don't need to count rivets. Uh, I have a whole wall of rivets over there left over from when I did the wings. Whatever you need uh, 474 4-4 rivets for, this is plenty of them for this kit. In fact, I'm going to pour this into the bag, uh, little, little box of 474 4s that I already have over there and write 1160 on there because they don't share numbers for some reason. But, you know, who cares, right? A rivet's a rivet, and if you know it's AN 470 AD 4-4, then it's the same either way. So, uh, either way, that's what I'm doing now. I'm going through, and I am inventorying all the parts. That's going to take several hours, many hours. Um, again, you don't have to count individual rivets. But you do need to count bolts. You know, if there's supposed to be 20 bolts in here, I don't know, however many there's supposed to be, there better be 20 in here. And I've never had uh, them error out of my favor. Uh, in fact, most of the errors I have found, especially from the last kit, was always in my favor, meaning I was supposed to have 20 bolts, they sent 22 or something like that, right? Very good about that, especially with the rivets. I got way more rivets than I ever needed. Uh, but thankfully... I mean, I, I used them, too, so I appreciate that extra mile that they go there. So anyways, back to it. Yeah, I shouldn't have said anything. Um, we'll talk about that in a second. This really did take, like, 
two and a half hours. It took a long time of, like I said, going through and making sure that each individual thing, whatever it is, is in each bag and identifying the parts. Sometimes they have multiple things in a single bag and they're not always easy to identify. Just do your best. Well, um, so I am completed with the hardware inventory and I'm a little shocked that uh, they actually shorted me a bag. So I am missing bag 1177, which includes 36 rivets, which are the MSP42 rivets. Now I actually have a couple of those left over from the previous kit. Uh, unfortunately, I only have five left from the previous kit. But interestingly, I have some standard Ace hardware or Aero hardware, whatever, aluminum uh, rivets that are identical. I mean, the only difference is in the color of the metal, so I'll need to see if maybe... Well, no, they're not quite identical. Never mind. So I will have to actually contact them and say, hey, um, you guys owe me a bag of rivets. But other than that, I mean, this is a lot of stuff, so missing one bag is not too bad. Unless it's somewhere else in the rest of the parts, I wouldn't think so. I would think it would be in with the rest of the uh, hardware kit, like everything else. But I'll come back and check. Um, and if it's not there, I'll have to go through the process of actually uh, having them send me something. So, still not done. Got a lot more inventorying to do. Uh, but it's getting late, so I will come back and do that tomorrow or maybe the next day. So, darn rivets. Well, that's it. That's the end of day one of going through and doing all the inventorying. And there's a lot more inventorying left to do. Like I said, that was me just doing that hardware kit. Uh, I still have to go through and do all the major pieces that you saw me unpack and then finally get started. I can't wait. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be awesome. Boys are frozen.